So here we are at the, the uh, Bratislava language, excuse me, polyglot gathering is now over. Yes. And the organizer is Lydia, Lydia Makova. And she has just been a whirlwind of, of energy, uh, trying to smile to all her friends while worrying about all the details and so forth and so on. <laughs> but let's not talk about the details. Let's talk about what was achieved. What, what is the significance? You know, I have trouble explaining to people, oh, I'm going to a polyglot conference. What is a polyglot conference? Are these just sort of freaks, geeks that, uh, you know, specialize in learning a bunch of languages? I, What's your impression? Well, yes, what did they we achieve? are in a way, mm -hmm. and I think that's what's uh, beautiful about it. Actually, I think the real achievement of this thing is that the community is being built mm -hmm. and strengthened. So many of many of the people here attended previous polyglot gatherings or other events, and now they met again together. And you could see when they met the first day, it's like, "Hey, haven't seen you in a long time," and of course they said it in all possible languages. And, uh, and now you see them leaving and there's new friendships and new people who know each other and that's, that's just so beautiful. And as a first time participant, although I was at the Montreal, you know, Long Fest, uh, it's wonderful to see the spirit, uh, to see the number of people who speak so many languages. I think that I'm a bit of an exception, uh, but actually I'm not an exception here. I'm very much the norm. And what always strikes me is, no, and I, before I get into that, I wanted to say there are some very interesting presentations. Presentations about the subject of le learning languages. There was a discussion about how uh, Bratislava used to be a, a trilingual city. Yeah. And of course, for various political and historical reasons, that's no longer the case. And so you learn about the country, and I've discovered more about Slovakia. So languages lead us to discoveries of other things, whether it be food or history and, and so forth, it's, which is lovely. But, but what I wanted to ask you is, uh, uh, there are so many people here who are so good at so many languages, it tells me that, that it, they're not exceptional. You can't have that many people who are born exceptional, mm -hmm. right? So therefore, in the general population, in fact, there must be a lot of people who could also learn three, if not 30 like Richard, but three languages. How do we move from this group of totally dedicated learners to removing some of the barriers that prevent your average person who wants to learn, who maybe has been going to the local community center Spanish class for seven years and hasn't made any progress and is stagnated and is frustrated. So how do you, how do you get some of those people to, to take advantage of, of what we experience here? Yeah, it's a great question. I think um, the, the answer to that is that we look at people who speak a lot of languages and mm -hmm. we take an example from them mm -hmm. uh, in meaning that as you said it cannot be that these are just super talented special people just very few of them and they happen to meet all here it shows us that uh, languages can be learned and I personally believe that the way languages are taught and mm -hmm. learned out there is not a very effective way and uh, my uh, you're aim, a language coach yourself yeah, right exactly. and you language don't call mentor. yourself a mentor language and you don't call yourself a teacher you call exactly. a, a mentor so what yes. does that mean that means that i don't teach anyone mm -hmm. i help people learn and i believe this is exactly the thing that all these people out here do differently mm -hmm. they don't wait for someone to to spoon feed them the language but they uh, they really learn themselves they spend the time with the language they find the resources themselves and they find a way how to enjoy language learning as you like or you help them well. find resources presumably yes of yes. course of you, course you help but them along I the think, way i mean I, I i help them in the way that i show them uh, a great choice of resources and the mm -hmm. people pick what they like mm -hmm. and they often ask me like how do i know whether i'm a visual type or audio type and i tell them well try it out for a few minutes and you will tell me if you like it if you do it's a resource for you if you don't then go for something else right, right. right? And, i mean I, certainly that's my philosophy if they enjoy the process if they enjoy what they're doing they'll stay with it and they'll have exactly. success yes, right? because if you... and so you've been able to develop a, a, a a core group of, of learners that you help as a mentor, yes, not exactly. as a teacher. And they exactly. accept the concept? Because yeah. the reason I, I say that is because people typically are conditioned to, to think, I need a teacher. Yes. And so you is, say, well, no, you don't need a teacher, I'm your mentor. How, exactly. how do you get over that This uh, is exactly problem? the difference, because when you, when you tend to think, I need a teacher, you actually think, I need to pay someone to teach me the language. Mm -hmm. So all I do is I pay the money, that's mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. co contribution, and the teacher teaches me because they have the knowledge. Right. right? But it's a skill. Language learning is a skill, it's not knowledge that someone mm -hmm. can impart mm -hmm. upon I agree with that. So that's why I always tell people, if you, 
if you don't understand that you cannot learn yourself, then I cannot help you. So mm -hmm. that's why I don't have a solution for everyone out right, there. Right. I wait for people to understand that you have to want to learn yourself and then I can help you find the way which is best for you. Right. And, and what's the age group then of the oh, people you help? All, all ages, really. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I Youngest with would students, be? Um, 13, 14, okay. you know, and yeah. the oldest people after 60, 70 mm -hmm. even. Mm -hmm. okay. And it's, it's beautiful to see how, how they really find the passion for the language. Mm -hmm. And after 20 years of being an eternal beginner, right. they suddenly make progress. Because right. they don't just go to the lesson twice a week, mm -hmm. but they actually learn at home. And right, it's right. so beautiful to it's, see. Uh, and, and that's what you have to do. Twice a week, exactly. grinders go, they're not going to do it. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, I think there's something magic here. Uh, I remember when Judith started this in Berlin some years ago, or even I guess Richard even earlier with the polyglot conferences, and I just, I didn't really see what it was, mm -hmm. and I wasn't that enthusiastic, I didn't come as you know, yeah. and then I experienced Montreal, which I enjoyed, and this one, which was even better, mm -hmm. and then the next uh, North American event will be yeah. the Lawn Fest in Montreal, and you're coming, Absolutely. and we have some exciting people coming to that, and I think people should, who, who maybe aren't, uh, yet devoted language learners, uh, if they're near a place where one of these polyglot conferences is being held, if in Europe, of course, then nearby, or in North America, in Montreal, they should come. Absolutely. And we would certainly look forward to seeing yeah. uh, all of you in Montreal. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and we will change the world. Is, yes, okay. so that everyone loves learning languages. There you go. Thank you very much, Lydia, and thank you very thank much you. for organizing this wonderful, My wonderful pleasure. conference. Thank you very much. Okay.